Thank you. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me ignite debate. Are leaders born or are they made? Scholars insist that they are made. I insist that they are born. Because what is it that starts that kind of leadership in a young girl of 18 years old? What is it? I mean, there are so many girls that are walking outside. Nobody has worked as hard as he had in pushing this act into the House of uh, Representatives. I knew at six years old that I was meant to lead. I didn't know to lead what? In a church, in a village, I didn't know, but I just overheard somebody telling my father that I see something in this child. She's going to lead. And I looked at her today, I said, how old are you? She says, 18. I said, I wish I had written my mission statement at that point. <laughs> it was although I knew, but I didn't pay enough attention. And I, my mission in life is to assist women and youth gain social and political empowerment through business and education. How much could I have achieved if I had started at this age? And so it gives me great pleasure to be here to present an award to Kennedy, but also to inform all of you that are here that our time has come. As women, we have to work and work, but it's up to us who get into leadership. It's our responsibility to mentor and support young leaders. I have always said that young people are not leaders of tomorrow as we hear in Africa. Young leaders are leaders, young people are leaders of today. This is their time. At age 18, she can push for an act to be passed. We must never stand in their way, but provide support. That is why in Malawi, I established what I call the Young Women Leaders Network. Um, I wanted to say with sadness that when I look at the MDGs, and I find that those that we are not going to be able to achieve are those that affect, that relate to women and girls, particularly MDG3 and MDG5. Isn't it a pity that your, our friends here in the US, when you become pregnant, it's a time of joy and expectation. You look forward, you show up around, you tell everybody where I come from. It's a time of anxiety. You don't even want to tell anybody. Your stomach is budging and somebody says you're pregnant. You say, no, I'm not. Because you think they are going to bewitch you. You don't know whether when you go, you will come back. In 1984, I went to have a baby. And I suffered what they call postpartum hemorrhage. And I was supposed to die. But my husband had a friend who was a gynecologist, came and saved my life. What about those that, that when, are not as fortunate as I am? So, my dear daughter, there's work to do, whether you are in a state house or not. And allow me to just tell you a few things that I have done, just one or two, in one minute or two. I believe truly, I don't know about America, but I know that the developing world, the key is income. Income into the poor household. Because when resources are low, the girls in those households are not going to school. The boys are being favored. So income into the poor household so that girls must go to, do, to, to, to school. So my pillar one is income, my pillar two in my life and in the Joyce Banner Foundation is education for the girl child. Pillar three is maternal health and HIV and AIDS. Why? Because when these girls are not going to school, they are ending up being encouraged by the community to get married. And my research has shown that those that are dying giving birth are between 15 and 19. And my pillar four is leadership, because I've been there, I've lived it, I know that when a woman gets into leadership at any level, the first thing they look at are issues that affect women and children. And my last pillar, that is pillar five cutting across, is that of rights. If I'm going to write a book in my life, it will be about rights, particularly harmful traditions and culture. There's a lot of work to do, my sweetheart. Get to work, I wish you the best. When you get into college, I had a chance to chat with her behind. Your focus 
should be girls and women because you've already started it and don't even apologize for it because there's work to do. Because distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we are the majority. We are more than men. And the last time I checked, even the other half, we brought it into this world. Congratulations, Kennedy, and may God bless you. Oh, wow, I am speechless right now after that. Thank you so much for having me here right now. This is such an honor. I have officially had the best past two days ever from my life. <laughs> Yesterday, I was out the White House with the President and the First Lady of the United States, um, witnessing such an important step to improve girls and um, education globally with their initiative of Let Girls Learn. And today, right now, I'm in a room with all of you, such inspiring people that we've heard, talking about how we can unite to achieve gender equality and support girls and women's empowerment around the world. Oh, and of course, being up here with Joyce Banda, <laughs> the former president of Malawi, who just introduced me, of <laughs> all people, and talked about my work and the work that she's done and the work that I hope to continue on. That's not a bad past two days at all. <laughs> um, as she said, I'm Kennedy, and I'm a teen advisor for Girl Up. And Girl Up is a campaign from the United Nations Foundation. And I work with Girl Up because I want to help every girl have the opportunity to accomplish her dreams, whatever they may be. Girl Up is a movement uniting girls to change the world. And since its launch in 2010, the campaign funded by the United Nations has promoted health, safety, education, and leadership of girls in developing countries and built a, and built a community of nearly half a million passionate advocates, not only from the United States, but from many different countries. Together, we stand up, speak up, and rise up to support the hardest to reach girls living in places where it is hardest to be a girl. I believe in a world where every girl can reach her full potential. And we can't do this when 290 million children don't have birth certificates, a fact we heard earlier. And for girls, this presents a serious barrier to her development. Without a birth certificate, it would be difficult, if not impossible, for a girl to get a job, to go to school. She won't be able to own her own land or start her own business. She will not be able to vote. She will likely be confined to the home and left unpaid. She will be an invisible member of her society. This is not what I want for girls, and I refuse to sit back and do nothing about it. Yes, it was definitely scary for me to go into my congressman's office as a teenager, 17 and 18, and demand that they support something that I'm so passionate about, the Girls' Count Act, a bill that will make counting girls a foreign policy priority. And it was also terrifying to stand up in front of a totally packed room of United Nations Association members in Denver and talk about the legislation and why it's important to document girls. And even right now, it's pretty frightening for me to stand up in front of you all being so much older and we have such similar ideas. But right now, <laughs> I need to use my voice because I know, I know that I have a role to play in making this world a better place. And I'm going to keep fighting for the Girls' Count Act to get passed, and I'm hoping that you all will join me in this fight. This past weekend, I was re reunited with all of the teen advisors. There's 19 of us. I'm not the only fabulous girl out there. <laughs> in New York City for a weekend of leadership development, workshops, and inspiring speakers. 
And one thing that really stuck to me was one, a quote from one of my fellow teen advisors, and she said, when, a girl, when Girl Up says it's for girls by girls campaign, it means we have each other's back. And I hadn't thought of it this way, but I knew she was right. I feel responsible to the girls in my community and all over the world because we deserve to dream, and those dreams need to become a reality. I am proud to be a citizen of this world. I am proud to be making a difference, and I am especially proud to be a girl. Thank you.